obstacles that we're going through where we feel like we're failures, we feel like we just want to give up, we feel like we just want to let our hands down. But Jesus died for us so that we won't have to do that because here I declare that victory. And I thank you for that, Lord. Jesus, give us that strength to keep moving forward, Lord. To keep moving forward, Lord. To not give up, Jesus. No matter what we're going through. Thank you, God, that we can come here and just give it to you, Jesus. Just lay our burdens at your feet, my God. Thank you, Jesus.
expecting it. We expect it from you tonight, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, bless the silver, Lord. Bless the preacher. Lord, bless the world. Bless everybody who came here tonight, Lord. We expect it from you. Oh, Jesus, I'm sorry, guys, but I feel like God wants to do something right now. God wants to do something right now. Just, just open up your heart for Him. Open up your heart because, because I know that He's here right now. His presence is tangible right now. And just, just lift up your hands and surrender your lives over to Him because He alone is worthy. He alone is worthy. He died for us on that cross and we hear that. We hear that all the time. But we never stop and think about what that really means. Will anyone ever die for you like that? Ever? Because I know that no one else in this world, not even your parents, will die for you the way that Jesus did. So Jesus, we thank you, my God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, for shedding your He wants to transform you. He wants you. He wants to just take those. 
6.33 says, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all those things will be given to you. That means God wants you to put him first in everything that you do. And that means when you go to work or you receive anything, God wants you to put him first in your thoughts and pick up a way to give back to him what you've just received. Because if giving back will bless not only the church, but your future finances, your future events that will happen in your life and everything. You'll be blessed no matter what if you put God first and make sure to give Him first without thinking of how to make yourself better. Because God will always make you prosper in everything you do. And after that, I'm just going to pray. Dear God, thank you for the service. Thank you for letting us join together. We bless every single hand and giving Lord every hand that's not able to give this week and bless everyone with their finances Lord give them more wisdom about how to handle their finances and how to put you first Lord and show them the blessings that they received already and that they're going to receive and bless their families and everyone involved in time and let everyone have better finances in the future support so they can get more to you and bless the rest of the service Amen Okay, guys, we're going to continue. One, two. One, two. This, okay. All right. How are you, my brother? Good. Nice to have you. Diana, good that you came. Hallelujah. Vika is here. Welcome, Brad, Brad from Ukraine. We have... Okay, all good. All right. Daniel, what's up, man? How are you? Good? Right. David, you all right, man? Is that obvious? I mean, nobody responded so far. Just few people about this trip to, to, to Lancaster to see Noah's play. Anyway, you know, just just as a reminder, if you still want to, there's still an opportunity. Uh, church, there is church service not only Saturday but also uh, Thursday as well. So uh, please join. And uh, if you you know water baptism, join. Uh, let me know. We're gonna sign your name for the for the classes, and then the Bible college starts. Join. Uh, 
I mean, same old stuff, you know. She's going to keep on saying the same thing until something happens. Hallelujah. All right, with that, let's welcome, we have uh, my dear brother Andre. He's going to share the word with us tonight. Anointed word of God. Hallelujah. It's okay. No problem. Nowadays, nowadays, you know how it is. You got to carry everything with you. God bless. Okay, you can come here. So this is your place. It's not, it's too much of a stuff on the way, so you can just adjust yourself. Yes, I will. The way it's going to be very much. Yes. Yes, I will. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. No, no, it's really a great opportunity. Do you hear me? Everybody hears me? He's going to adjust. Okay, okay. I told Jenny before, I don't need no microphone. I can speak loud if you want us to measure it. Yeah. Me- measure what was. Same here, but for the camera. For the camera, okay. okay. For the camera purposes. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I'm really glad to see you all guys, girls here. It's so wonderful to be in the presence of the Lord. I'm telling you, when God comes in this place, like, I got that feeling that I don't want to stop worshiping. I know we, we're limited by time. We're limited by uh, some circumstances that not allow us to do some certain things. But I know in eternity it's different. There is no time limits. There is no uh, obstacles. There is no circumstances that are going to uh, stop you to worship Him. And some people say that over here in the earth, it's basically like we're in a school. We're learning how to worship Him. We're learning how to obey Him. We're learning how to walk by his ways. And how's the sister, I like the way she was praying actually and telling that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you graduated from Bible school or you are calling yourself a big ministry or you pastor or something. God is calling you not because of those things, trust me, but God is looking for the obedient heart, for the meek heart, the heart that is going to listen his voice and is going to do what God tells him to do. That heart, God is looking, and I'm, I guarantee that heart, God is going to use a lot abundantly. Okay? And that heart is going to receive uh, the, the joy from the Lord, and it's going to receive nagrado, reward. reward from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Once again, uh, I'm really glad to see you all together here. And... There is no secret for all of us that we live in the last days and that Jesus is coming is soon. Yes. Yes. We all know that. If you believe that, please wave with me. Yes, I believe. Knowing that, what the Bible teaches us? The Bible tells us a lot of... I'm sorry. A little bit annoying. The Bible is teaching us a lot of important things vital, important things that we have to consider in our lives. And me, myself, personally, and you guys over here, I just want to speak with you and share a little bit, like kind of open talk about what some important, vital things that we have to concern about and what we have to do according what what teaches us the word of God and it should, let, it, let it be just refresh in our minds in our hearts that God is near and what Bible tell us what we have to do according to his word Amen and I want you to open with you all, all of us 2 Peter chapter 3 2 Peter chapter 3 from verse 1 I'm going to start My loved ones, this is now my second letter to you. And in this, as in the first, I am attempting to keep your true minds awake, so that you may keep in mind the words of the holy prophets in the past, and the law of the Lord and Savior, which was given to you by his apostles. Having first of the knowledge that in the last days there will be the man who rule but their evil desires, will make sport to holy things, saying, Where is the hope of this coming? From the death of the fathers till 
now everything has gone unless it is from the making of the world. But in the taking this view, they put out of their minds the memory that in the old days there was a heaven and the earth lifted out of the water and circled by the water by the word of God. And that the world which then was came in an end through the overflowing of the waters. But the present heaven and the present earth have been kept for the destruction of fire, which is awaiting for them on the day of the judging and the destruction of evil men. But my loved ones, keep it in mind, this is one thing, that with the Lord one day is the same as a thousand years, and the thousand years are no more than one day. The Lord is now, is not slow in keeping his word, as he seems to sound, but he is waiting in its mercy for you, not desiring the destruction of any, but that all may be turned from their evil ways. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and that day in the heavens will be rolled up with a great noise. The substance of the earth will be changed by the violent heat, and the world and everything in them will be burned up. Seeing that, that all these things are coming to such an end, what sort of the persons is right for you to be in all holy behavior and righteousness, looking for and truly desiring the coming of the day of God? When the heavens will come to the end through the fire and the substance of the earth will be changed by the great heat. Amen. I'll stop right here. Amen. I believe this is a very important passage that Apostle, Apostle Peter has uh, been trying to share with the church, with the uh, church of those days, that his timing was coming to the end. And why that church has a power? First of all, because they all were together. They were in one heart, that says, and one thoughts and one soul, and one sharing. Everything was uh, equal between them. The power, it says, because they were doing the right things before the, the, the Lord of God. God was bringing the people to the church and saved the people, okay? So I believe there is no difference. What was back then, there were some people saying, oh, that was 2,000 years ago. Today we live in 21st century. Listen to me. The Word of God never changed. You understand? He said he was yesterday, today, and forever. Yes. If they say it was over there, specific culture, specific for specific reasons, saying some things, listen to me. Don't be foolish. The word of God is ever everlasting word. Never changed. He told that it was for 4,000 years before the Christ about Saddam, about the, uh, the, that sin, gay and stuff, and lesbian stuff. Still, it's so common nowadays. Look what's going on. People now dictating and saying that, what, what Peter was saying that in the last days, there's going to be scaffolds. It's very interesting word, and from translate from English, nasmishniki izubaskali. Those who today telling you, where is God? Where is God? They sharpen their teeth. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're saying, now, where is God? Where is God? Like, it, it was 3,000 years ago, it was 2,000 years ago. Today is 21st century, nothing changes. We live, we have jobs, we work and work and work. But let me ask you this. Do you think those people are openly screaming to you, like, where is God? Where is God? Or... They, they kind of hiding way. What, what do you think? I, really, you, 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 you can see some atheists that they, 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 they say there is no God, it's, everything is not true, that there, is no, there is no God. But I believe devil, he's weaker and smarter than those people who are trying to say that there is no God. And he's telling to us today, not through people, but through the things around the world, that is around us. It could be a media, it could be a advertisement, it could be any things that are around our lives. Anywhere we go, might say to you, listen, you do some certain things and nothing happens, 
you, you, you live some certain lifestyle, nothing happens. What's going on? Where is God? It could become to you on the level of your thoughts. And remember what God says. And you start thinking that I am just like you, the God says in the Bible. You start thinking that if I'm not punish you, if I'm not telling you that stop doing some certain things, you think I'm like you, God says. No, God is not like that. But what Bible says over here, because of the some people that he is trying to save, and we all should say that God is not finished with me yet. It's very important stuff that because of his mercy, because of his love, he is trying to give people today another chance to repent, to stop living evil lives, to stop doing bad things, to stop going wrong places, to stop wearing nasty clothes, to stop looking like this world. If something not happened in your life, and God is telling you, and you hear it clearly, because our judgment is going to be according to His word. You understand? God said, I'm not going to judge you. The mind word is going to judge you. Why? Because He gave us that word, and everything we need is in that word. And if He's going to tell you, listen, you should dress accordingly, like should be a humble woman, not putting a lot of jewelry on yourself, not being like also oh, uh, open, like whatever in a clothes, like bring your old stuff, like so everybody could see it. But what Bible says, Bible says, the woman of God, she should be a meek, she should be quiet, she should say not a lot of words, she should be keep yourself in prayer. If you don't trust me, it says in the Timothy, a verse, a verse to Timothy, he writes those things. Up, up, uh, chapter 2, verse 9, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. But it doesn't matter. What I'm trying to say is this. It's not that what I'm trying to preach today. But I'm saying that God is going to ask us for everything is in His Word. If we live according to His Word, if we fulfill, you're not going to be able to tell God, I was living in the 21st century. Everybody is wearing mini skirts. Everybody is like wearing thousand jewelry, so tongue piercing, belly piercing, this piercing, that piercing. Everybody was doing that. God is not gonna tell you. Listen, I I put you as my daughter. I put you as my son, so you can glow in the darkness, so you can be a salt, so you can be a light for those who live miserable, evil lives. If you're not going to turn that way, trust me, no wonder that people don't want to follow. No wonder, because whatever we do here, we, we, what makes us different from people over there? You understand? You better understand one thing. You know how one of the devil's trick? He wants to show you that how bad people in the church are and how good people outside of church. Listen carefully. He is going to show you how bad people in the church, he is going to show you all negatives you will be able to see when you go to the ministry, when you go to the, to the service. He's going to show you. Look at this guy. Look at that one. Look at what she says. Da, 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 da. And all the, say amen if you understand what I'm talking about. He's going to show you all negatives in the, inside the church. And he's, he's going to show all beauty outside the church. But thank for our God that He is honest God. That He is not weak in, in, in His ways. Whatever He says, listen, our suffering, you're going to suffer. I was persecuted, you're going to persecute. He never said us, you're going to live prosperity life, you're going to be living perfect, you're going to do this, you're going to jump, you're going to fly, you're going to be on top of the world, you're going to have everything, you're going to ta 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 No. He said, first of all, there is a way which is narrow and which is hard way. And very few people are find that way. Very few people are find that way. 
However, he says very wide the way to the hell and a lot of people are going through that way. Listen to me, church. It's time to get serious. It's time to get serious nowadays. Especially youth. Right now, for devil, you know, Bible teaches that young people are basically under attacks of the devil. It says that older guys stay stay strong because you overcome the devil. For Epistle of John says you overcome him. Uh, the fathers, you've seen the glory of God. You mature. From step by step, you mature in God if you grow in God. And for him right now, as we young, as we youth, if you just came into the God, if you just start, start have relationship with God, see, for him, the Christian who established himself in Jesus, and he said, that's it, I'm not going to turn no way. It's very hard for devil to attempt that person. It's very hard to do something to that person. Whoever really make the decision, Lord, I'm following you. It's all about to make a decision inside of you. Am I following you, Lord, or I'm not following you? Me, myself, I'm going to say a little bit about myself for people who don't know me. I used to be a drug addict. I used to do drugs. I used to do heavy drugs, cocaine, heroin, shooting, stuff like that, street life, all that. Okay? And I was miserable. And thank Lord, thank God, He saved my life. He gave me a wonderful family. He gave me wonderful kids. He gave me a job. He gave me... I, I graduated college, everything and everything. And I started at age of 30. Right now I'm 35. And it's all glory to Jesus. And I'm telling you, people say, Oh, you're good. It's your um, seal of warning. Your will. Your willpower. I said, listen... If I had the willpower, I would first of all, I would never be a drug addict. I would be never be a miserable. I would be stuck at the age 20 or whatever and start living a normal life, okay? And be like a normal people and be doing a good things, okay? And achieve more stuff in my life. However, I am what I am, okay? And he found me at the age of 27 and I thank Lord that. And Right now, I'm age 25. I don't feel like I'm 25. I feel like my life just started. Because in Jesus, it says over here, one day is a thousand years, a thousand years is one day. He has no time. We in time. You understand? We limited ourselves. Our body has ability to get older, to get like weak. Okay? But for God, it says, He tells us, if you live in God, even... When you're older, you feel like you're strong, fresh. You're fresh. You're like Bible teaches that all those Petra, Petra, Abraham, David, all those people, whoever was dying, they said they were full with power. They were full of consciousness. They were full of of of, of glory, and they were just. It was another a transition to the to the another world to to, to, to the not, another life for them you know like their soul never gets older sometimes the older people you talk to them they 70 60 60 70 and they say that oh i feel like i'm i'm 16 i feel like i'm 20 i feel like i'm 30 because soul has ability never gets older our bodies get older so don't don't be disappointed if you feel younger inside of yourself Trust me, people will see it, that you that you live in God. You understand? That's that's one thing that people walking in the world and seeing us sometimes that we are like tired, like we 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 always in the problems that we always like, and they don't want to come to you. And they're, they're never gonna ask you about Jesus. They never even you gonna tell them that you're a believer. Trust me, they're never gonna come to you because what's the difference for them? They used to go to the Orthodox Christian churches, the Buddha candles, people who call it, oh, I'm Christian, I'm Christian, or Catholics, or uh, anywhere, you know. And what's the difference? They want to see something. The difference, and difference, whatever you tell them, according to the Word of God. And you live by whatever you're saying to them. One woman, the place I work, she's like, 
whatever, she's a hard woman and everything and everything, but I'm praying, I believe God can do something for her. And basically a couple of days ago, I was trying to work, I was, I, t- I picked her up at the drive and she's like, you know, we, try, we were talking about Jesus and stuff like that, because, and sometimes she just goes with me and she's like cursing out every second word, and I'm like, I can't already, I said, listen, Rita, please, she's older, she's 36, 37 years old woman, but dirty mouth, you know, like, da 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 whatever. And the other day, I was going with her, and she's like, she tells me, yeah, you, you, you're, you're different, whatever, because she knows it my, about my wife, I always tell her about my kids, the, my lifestyle, that I don't curse, I, I, I mean, it's a visible thing, so of course, I, I'm not saying that I'm like, it's a lot of things inside of me that have to change, believe me, who knows, God knows, but, <laughs> but, the thing is, she said, uh, but the thing she says that, whatever you say, she, she goes, you're different, like, by your faith, that, uh, says, uh, read, read that, she's like, oh, I, I do a lot of scientific research about that, 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 I said, listen, I simply go by Bible, I don't do any researches, and my faith, is according to the word of God. Whatever it says there, I accept it, I believe it, and that's about it. Okay? She's like that, 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 and she goes, yes. Uh, you basically, you, 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 you live according to your faith. She told me that, and it's good, that, 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 that. And she stopped, and I said, don't curse no more. <laughs> and I drove to the world, but it's another story, just like. But what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to say that only Jesus, only Jesus, Real, real relationship with Him can make us walk the way we're supposed to walk. None of the religions, none of the mitzvahs, none of, none of the any that stuff is going to make you, you, please understand, please hear me, not, none of them is going to make you the person that should be righteousness before the face of the Lord. See? I don't want to judge Judaism, I don't want to say anything, they, it's a long story and everything and everything, but as I understand, they trying to fulfill the law and the commands by their deeds, by their deeds. But let me tell you something, and maybe it's going to be a secret, maybe not. There is no, no matter how many, how many deeds, no matter what did you do in your life, you're never going to satisfy God. You're never going to satisfy God, no matter what, how good you are, no matter how many good things you've done, no matter how, only one thing will satisfy God, is your faith in the Christ, in His Son, and deeds that you're doing according to that faith Amen. in Jesus Christ. Yes. Only by faith, not by deeds. we got to understand that. And over here, it's very important to see if we're going to force ourselves or if I'm going to read more Bible, or if I'm going to pray more, or if I'm going to see this more, or if I'm going to see those people, or I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that, so maybe God is going to have more place to be and stuff like that. No. It's only through Jesus Christ, by faith in Him, when everything you do is according to the word of God, according to the Jesus. When you bow your on your knees and everything you do, he says, Jesus, please help me. Jesus, I do it in your name. Jesus, everything you do in his name. And that's what is going to please God. Please understand that. It's very important. And like I said, I don't want to judge. I don't want to say that they're doing the wrong things, but that's what the Bible is teaching us, okay? Also, let us open Mark, Book of Mark, chapter 13, please. Book of Mark, chapter 13, where our Lord and our Savior tells us that we have to be ready. It's very important. And I'm going to start read from verse 32. But... Of that day, or that hour, no one has knowledge, not even the angels in heaven, of the Son, but the Father. Take care, keep watch with prayer, for you are not certain when the time will be. It is when a man who is in another country for a time, having gone away from his house, 
and given authority to his servants and to everyone his work gives the poor an order to keep watch. So you are to keep watch because you are not certain when the master of the house is coming in the evening or in the middle of the night or at the uh, raster cry or in the morning. For the fear that coming suddenly he sees you sleeping. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep watch. Guys, those are the keys that God is giving to us to be ready for the last times that he is coming. And I love my Lord Jesus Christ because he has no... Uh, Partiality. He has no partiality. You favoritism. See, favoritism, yes, another word. See, do you remember when, like, sometimes the disciples were following him, and when he was alone, they were approaching to him. It could be Peter, it could be John, it could be uh, Jacob, James, and they were asking questions. Lord, please explain us what's going on there, what's going on there. And he was sharing with them. But he never mentioned the favoritism that you better than those. He never said any way in the gospel. And I love his honesty. I said, devil is a weaker. He is trying to fool you. He is trying to show how everything is beautiful from outside. But how everything is rotten inside, he never shows you until he got you on a hook. Okay? And the Jesus said, what Jesus says over here, he said, he didn't lie to them. He didn't tell them, oh, James, Peter, come here, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to come in 2015, and February 9th, so please wait for me. No, he didn't do that. He said that, and he said to everybody that nobody knows, no angels, no me, but the Father, when I'm coming back, it's the same thing. When God is going to tell him, and Jesus is ready, my son, I want you to go right now to that earth and take over and pick up the church and do what you're going to do. He's waiting for the command. He's listening to his father. And whatever God is going to give that time, why God didn't give us time? It simply understood that if I knew that Jesus is going to come, let's say, tomorrow, Right? And everything I was good doing until that moment tonight, I could repent and I could stop doing those things and be forgiven and go to the heaven. But there is not, there is no such a trick like that because people are gonna be foolish. He said, "Listen, you have to be awake. You have to stay alert because I can come at any time, and it could be at me." night time, it could be a morning, it could be any time. So, what does it tell us? That we have to be ready, that we have to stay alert. What do we have to do? It says, we have to stay in prayer and stay awake. Stay in prayer and stay awake. If you ever see uh, Jehovah Witnesses, they uh, given up those uh, tower that says, awake. 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 Once, they were trying to approach to me. And it was back in the days, I just came for rehabilitation. I was like, I don't know, a little bit more on fire. <laughs> rehabilitation is different stuff. But anyway, so there's two ladies. There's two ladies in my park. I live by Cropsey Park, Cropsey Bay Park. Right? So they, they, they sit and they're like, I'm walking my dog, stuff like that. And they come into me and start talking to me like that, 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 that. And this comment is awake, probuditis, awake. And I said, well, why, why it's not, not finished? It's not only awake. It says, I, I go, it, it, it says, pray and stay awake. But for them, it's only awake. I says, it, it not finished praise. Why is that? And we start arguing, you know, how it is. And I was trying to explain my point. He was trying to explain me. Finally, one lady started listening to me. It was an opportunity for me to spoke with them. Okay? And, I was, and the other one, just grab her, come on, come on, no, he, he doesn't, he, let's, let's get out of here, let's get out of here, she was poor. That lady want to stay with me, because I was trying, let's open it, let's, let's open the look, chapter look, and everything was explained there. However, it was back there. I tell you what Bible says, Bible says pray and stay awake.
prayed. Prayer is very important part, I would say part of our life, of our lifestyle. If we not spending our time in 24 hours, see Bible, Bible teaches us, at least it has to be two hours a day. But see, sometimes we get that approach that it has to be like, I'm, I'm staying right here and in this room I have to I stay and pray for two hours. Sometimes it could be a lot. Sometimes you don't have just words to, to pray, right? That's why we have a, a tongues that we can pray because we don't know what to pray about. It could be happen too. But let me tell you something. It could be also when you're driving your car, when you're going in a train, when you just walking in the street, it could be any time. Prayer, it just it explains your relationship with God that you stay in awake. When you in a prayer, you stay in awake. When you are in a prayer, you stay in awake. Prayer helps you stay awake. I put this way. Right. Prayer helps you stay awake. It's very important for us as a Christians, as a young kids, because like I said, for us, for us, it's a lot of temptation in this world still. Why some people saying that these days are very hard to live than these back then? Because look at this. Just look just look at this lifestyle. How times go fast. Look at the summer. Summer is almost finished. It just started. It's already finished. Mm -hmm. Like the life is like running like this. Just, just, just look a little bit back. Just look a little bit back. See, today with this equipment, it saved for us a lot of times that were like back in the days for people. Like let's say to write the letter, to send it, to wait for the response. It, it took forever. It took forever. But nowadays, everything is in the fast world. Everything is like this. Every, everybody wants to do it quick, 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 fast. That's why life is running very, very fast. If we're not going to stay awake in this stream, and that crazy stream, I would say, we, we, have, we, we, we might, we're not, we're not going to make it. But Jesus wants us. He wants to take us from that sweet like I said. Vanity. vanity. Take away us from vanity and put in his yeah. Uh, put in his word and keep us in his dimension. You understand what I'm saying? Because this world is gonna make right now everything is crazy around us, like circumstances, job family, this, that, friends, that, that, we're always busy, we're, we're always doing something, but well, we're not doing the right things before the Lord. We forget to pray, we forget to read the Word of God, we forget to simply talk to Him. We simply forget, but He is always waiting for us. He's always waiting for us, and we sometimes like in a, a sleepy mode. You, you heard that uh, before the phrase, right? That the churches in the United States, like, they, they're in a sleeping mode. Like, we're gathering together, we're praying, we're doing this, we're doing that, but we're in a sleeping mode. But this is a very dangerous mode. And I want us all together, please open the book of Acts. We're going to read an interesting story. I, I believe many of you read that before. But I want you to do it again. And I'm going to start uh, Acts chapter 20. I'm going to start from verse 1. And after the noise had come to the end, Paul, having sent for the disciples and given them comfort, went away from the Macedonia. And when he had gone through those parts and given them much teaching, he came into Greece. And when he had had been there three months, because the Jews had made him a secret design against him when he was about to take ship to Syria, he made a decision to go back to Macedonia. And Sopater of Beroa and the son of 
Firmis in Aristarchus and Sicatonus and Thessalonica and Gansus and Debre and Timothy and Tychius and Graphemus of Asia and went with him as far as Asia. I'm sorry for my pronunciation with those words. But these had, had gone before and were waiting for us at Troa. And we went away from Philippi by ship after the days of unleavened bread, and they came to the temple Troa in the five days, and we were there for seven days. And on the first day of the week, when he, went, when he had come together for the holy meal, Paul gave them a talk, for it was his purpose to go away on the day after. And he went on talking till after the midnight of the night, and there were a number of lights in the room. In the room where we had come together, and a certain young man named Eutychus, who was sitting in the window, went in a deep sleep, and the while Paul went on talking, being overcome by sleep, he had a fall from the third floor and was taken up dead. And the pole went down, and the failing on him took him in his arms and said, Do not be troubled, for his life is in him. And when he had gone up and had taken the broken bread, he went on taking to them for a long time, even till dawn, and the wind he went, he went away. And they took the boy in living, and they were greatly comforted. Hallelujah. It's a great story. I believe many of you have read that story. What the Bible says over here. The Bible explains us that Paul was traveling and he had a mission to go to the Rome. His desire was to stay before the empire and preach into him. And that's another story. That's another uh, uh, preaching we can say about the, the, the mission of him, but I want to mention over here about that young guy and all the young people run away <laughs> from the back. About that young guy, Euphyticus. Euphyticus. Those names. Okay, whatever. Euthyticus. 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 Yeah, come. It doesn't matter. <laughs> what the point is over here, he was a young guy and he fell down from the third floor. Who of you got fallen from somewhere high? Yeah. What was the highest you fall down? Second floor. Second floor. <laughs> Second floor. Who else? Second floor? Nobody? Nobody? No? Yes. Nobody from third floor? Well, probably not. If we were third floor guys, it would be probably a little end. Who knows? But, when I'm trying to bring this point over here, I think it's very important. Why Bible, why Bible has mentioned this story over here about this boy that falling from that third floor. I think it's very important. Let us take a look what will happen over there in that room. Uh, it says, and the first day of the week when they had come together for the holy meal, Paul gave him a talk, for it was purpose to go away after, and he was talking until the midnight of the night. So, Paul was always in a mission. While he was sitting there, He was gathering and he knew that tomorrow he has to go. And nobody knew. Paul, it could be for Paul last chance to speak to these people. Okay? Because he was, like I said, he was really on mission and his lifestyle was traveling. He was a pastor. And he was building up the churches everywhere and keep moving and moving and moving. By the grace of the Lord, he was chosen vessel and doing God's work. And he didn't know, but Bible says that tomorrow he had to go. So, and that was last supper, he was communing, they were breaking up the bread, they were drinking the wine. And afterwards, Paul started preaching, and that preaching ended up all the way to the very late night. 
I believe the people who are sitting there was really interesting because to be with a, such, a, such a person is just a blessing itself. The things he was sharing with them was extremely important for that church and for those people who, who were sitting there. And here's a story that it's a mid, mid, midnight, it's already late, and it's very important message of the whole. And I believe most of the people which sit in just like that, like in this room, or even they didn't have a chairs, much chairs. In those days, they were sitting on the floor, and sometimes the floors they were not clearly clear. I mean, they could be dirty. They could be a ground, simply ground. They were sit, the people were sitting and listening. And there was a young woman, man, young man who was trying to be the smarter than everybody, who was trying to be a, yeah, who was trying to be above all, all, the, all those people. And the person was simply decide to go higher than everybody else. And the person could be not even knowing what he is doing. Because he, it's possible that he came with his parents. That possibility too, because the Bible says it was a young man. But I want you to pay attention before that. It says, and there were a number of lights in the room where we, we had come together. Very interesting. It says, a lot of lamps, a lot of light. What does it tell us? God when there's a lot of light, exactly. God was there. When there's a lot of light, there is no place for darkness. There is no place for darkness. The light, the candles, the lamps, what it represents in a book of Revelation, do you remember? Who was holding them? God was holding them when he was talking to the John. And here's this room. And Bible states that there was a lot of candles, there was a lot of light. That was a time not falling asleep. Church, listen clearly. Listen carefully. God is giving us today a lot of light to His Word, to His teaching, to the pastors, to the elders. But God is giving that light. Anywhere today, thank God, we have opportunity to study like that to preach the word of God, to be in presence, to worship Him, to play instruments, to play, to sing beautiful voices here. So we have this from God. That's His light in our lives. Sometimes, remember what He says in the book of Revelation? He says, if you're not going to repent, I'm going to take those lights from your vision. What does that mean? If you do, if you do neglect, According to the word of God, according to whatever is going on in the church, whatever is going on with his people, if you do negative things, if you not appreciate what God is doing in your life, he is going to move. It's a church. He's going to move it from he's going to move it from the side so you won't be able to see anymore. You won't be able to come to church anymore. Why do you think so many people are stepped away today from church? They're not coming to church anymore. Because once they receive a Lord Himself, and they understood how wonderful the Lord is, they decided to go to the world again. And God knows where they are right now. And God knows how they're going to finish. But listen to carefully. This pure example of that young kid that was sitting over there where there is a lot of light, there was a lot of opportunity from God to speak to them to your life, to teach you. Even Holy Spirit Himself is willing to teach you today to His Word. And if you not are staying awake, in the word of God, you're going to fall off. 
But what it says over there, the guy was trying to sit higher than everybody else. He put himself on the third floor. Don't we sometimes thinking that we're already going to these places, we're already doing some certain things, we're already doing this, we're already doing that, we're already okay, we're already good, we already don't have to do so much prayer, so much fasting, we don't have to do this, we don't have to do that, we're already mature Christians. How many of us have start thinking sometimes this way? And I'm, I'm talking to myself. We're thinking, hey, I'm going to handle this. Hey, I'm, third floor is no big deal for me. Third floor is nothing for me. And what's going to happen? We lift up ourselves. It's another trick of devil to put in you that, listen, stop. Don't go crazy. Don't be fanatic. Don't be do. Don't do this. Go there, da, da, da. Do it like this. You know, don't go crazy on this. And so easy for us to fall in temptation. And we are on the third floor. And we are thinking that we're going to be okay. We're going to handle the situation. But that window that guy was sitting was stated on purpose. I want you to open with me a book of Jeremiah. Chapter 9. Book of Jeremiah. Chapter 9. Verses 20 to 24. And I'm going to read. But even now, give a year to the word of the Lord. O you woman, let your ears be open to the word of his mouth, training your daughters to give cries of sorrow, everyone teaching his neighbor as a song of grief. For death has come up into our windows, forcing it its way into our great houses, cutting off the children in the streets and, and the young men in the white places, the bodies of men will be falling like waste on the open fields and like grain dropped by the grain corner and no one will take them up. This is the word of the Lord. Let not the wise man take pride in his wisdom or the strong man in his strength or the man of wealth in his wealth. But if any man has pride, let it be in this that he has the wisdom to have knowledge of me, that I am the Lord, working mercy, giving true decisions, and going righteousness in the earth. For in these things I have delight, says the Lord. Listen to me. Bible teaches over here. It says the death was coming through the windows. And that kid that was sitting on the third floor falling asleep. He might not fall asleep, but he falls asleep. He might stay awake because there was a lot of light, was present of the Lord over there. But he decided to fall asleep. So today, as we church, is in, we in that condition that we are falling asleep, that we are not staying awake. So, what happened to that kid? That kid fall off. And what happened to that kid? Whatever that the word of God was saying over there before, he fall dead. And he fall dead. And what it says over there? And the pole went down, and the failing on him took him in his arms and said, Do not be troubled, for his life is in him. Listen to me. God is coming to you today, seeing you in my fallen position, that we are falling somewhere and some places. He's coming tonight, 
is coming in your life to grab you, to hug you, to give you another chance to stay awake before the presence of the Lord. That He is loving you so much. He is forgiving you. Yes, amen. But don't regret that He is doing this because He doesn't see or He doesn't know what wrong things are you doing. Or you might think that He is like this. Don't think it. Don't think it. He knows everything. Bible says everything is naked before Him. He knows you every thought. He knows you every move. He knows you every step. He knows everything about you. Everywhere, everything you do. Always remember that. Always remember that. That His eyes are observing this earth. That He knows exactly what are you thinking or even what you're going to think. He knows that too. So, my message is to you today. What are we missing? What are we staying? What are we doing? How do we stay? Do we spend enough time with Lord? Do we spend a lot enough time in a prayer? Do we spend enough time in fasting? And being with Him? Talking to Him? Listen to me. I love you so much, George. And I believe God wants to do something with loyal people, with faithful people that over here tonight. You've seen a lot of people who are coming here, these doors, and leaving these doors. And they have opportunity to stay here and to choose the right path and do the right things before the Lord and stay awake. Only God knows where they are right now and how they're going to finish. I pray to the Lord that they're all going to be back. Please, Lord, bring those people back over here. Because whatever God is doing here, I don't want to say anything, but I know Pastor Isaiah more than almost 10 years. And I know him very well. And I know his heart. And I know that he's, whatever he's putting over here, in you, investing in you. Trust me. Trust me, I'm telling you. He has so much patience for everything that is going on over here. There were a lot of people here coming, trying to do whatever he's doing here. Dropping it because they could not handle it and just simply walking away. I see him doing this work over here and investing himself over here in each of you. And in me as well. I know I learn, I still learn a lot of things from him. And I believe God is working through him. And I believe God is doing a great job through him. And I'm telling you, girls, I know it's not easy. Boys, a lot of temptation in the world. A lot of things that you want to try. I know even if you try it already, it's like, it's so triggering. It's so, 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 we so want it. We're still fighting those temptations. We're still fighting those lusts. We're still fighting all that. It's not easy. It's not easy. And the Lord said it's not going to be easy. He said there's going to be narrow way. Narrow. And it's going to be a lot of vultures and, and bad things on that way. It's going to be hard. And thank God that He tells us that it's going to be hard. And whatever they're teaching you and telling you that it's, everything is going to be beautiful, everything is going to be easy. The world teaching you that. Okay? You want to achieve something? Use your beauty. You want to achieve something? Use this. Use that. You know, like, use something that somebody's going to use it for a little bit. Then they're going to wipe off their feet of you and throw you away like a piece of trash. Like what, what happened with us, with me, particularly. And I know Pastor Isaiah went through the same thing. And he's, I know a lot of people here went through a lot of things. But God has given us another opportunity. I want you to read with us together and we're going to pray. Whatever we left over it. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, please. 2 Peter chapter 3. 
and I start reading from verse 14. For this reason, my loved ones, as you are looking for these things, take great care that when he comes you may be you in peace before him, free from sin and every evil thing, and be certain that the long waiting of the Lord is for salvation, even as our brother Paul has said in his letters to you from the wisdom which was given to him. And he has said in all his letters which had to do with these things, and which are some hard sayings, so that, like the rest of the holy writings, they were twisted by those who are uncertain and without knowledge to the destruction of their souls. For this reason, my loved ones, having knowledge of these things before they take place, take care that you are not turned away by the error of the uncontrolled, so failing from your true faith, but that be increased in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May he, may he have glory now and forever. So be it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is so such a powerful world. Listen to me. While we're in this earth, there are gonna be people who will evil to you and he will try you to walk away from here. They're gonna do every every possible things that they can to like to, to do something so you gonna be stepped away from the God's way. Listen to me. If you choose that path, stay on that path all the way to the end. I guarantee you, once you take, you make a decision in your heart, and you're gonna tell Jesus, I wanna follow you, follow you all the way to the end. No matter what's gonna happen, no matter where I'm gonna be, trust me, if you're gonna make that decision, God will come on that decision and will help you to do the right things you will feel it's like a burden is gonna go away from your soul if you still have dilemma am I, am I in the right place am I, am I doing the right thing am I uh, 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 in a place that where I should be trust me if you in that dilemma if he, you didn't choose honestly in your heart where you want to be and what you want to do make that decision today. I guarantee you, the Lord sees your heart, He knows your heart, and He will answer you for that prayer, and He will help you to make that right decision, if you can tell it that. Okay? Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity today to share with you guys that, and just for myself, I want to pray right now for myself, Lord, that you are, you're refreshing our minds, Lord. Lord, you given us understanding that you are knocking in the door and you want to come in and you want to have a communion with us. You want to be in our hearts. You want to be in our lives. You want to be in our families. Lord, I believe I believe that you're coming for good. I believe that you're coming and you're not going to be late. What you want from us is to be in prayer and stay awake. What you want to be from us to be loyal and faithful to your work, to your word, to everything that you do in our lives. Be loyal and faithful to the word of the God. Anyway, we're going to go. Anyway, people that we're going to speak. So we should carry that light, a light of Jesus Christ, that we're not going to look like this world, that we're not going to be uh, desired by last of this world, but we're going to rebuke and reject and all that sin who is penetrating our hearts, deeply penetrating our hearts, and trying to take over our hearts, and we rejecting, and we are asking you, Please forgive us, Jesus. Please cleanse us. Cleanse us with your holy word, yes. with your pure blood. Cleanse us from our sins that are 
just damaging our lives, damaging our hearts, damaging our future, damaging our families, future families, our kids, our families, our loved ones. Jesus, we're asking you today, Lord, be the Lord of our hearts. Be you the one. There is no such a name. There is no such a God just like you are. Yeshua. Jesus. We thank you. We thank you for this wonderful time. For this opportunity to be together. To pray together. We don't want to exalt each other among each other. No, Lord. We're all your kids. We're all your children. We're all your loved ones. And I know you care. You care. You care about each and every one of us here. I thank you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Lord, let your name be glorified in holy name. And we pray in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the whole people God's nation will say, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. God bless you, my brother. God bless you. Yes. Thank you. Let's give it for Andrew once again. No, Praise the Lord, but thank to Andrew. Yes. Uh, yes. We don't praise Andrew, we praise the Lord, but we thank you, Andrew. Yes. All right. And uh, yeah, I know it's, it's a tough for him to, 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 to speak in English and so forth. It's a challenge, but he's accepting this challenge to bless us with the word. Thank you so much. I received this word today because it's very relevant to, to my situation. It's very relevant to the time in which I live. Therefore, all of us are living because we happen to be here together in this day and age. You know, neighboring, cohabitating with one another uh, in this last days uh, in which, absolutely, awake is the word, is the motto for living. Awake before God. Keep it strong. Keep it very much with your bold eyes open. Keep it. You know, uh, because uh, just just quickly, we're gonna finish it now. But I just want to add quickly, just 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 this thought that uh, uh, the days in which we live, this is what's gonna be happening according to the Bible, according to the Word of God. This is what's gonna be happening. Just just open with me quickly, Daniel, Daniel, quickly, Daniel chapter 12. I just wanna really wanna share this. It's very important. Daniel chapter 12. Uh, Prophet uh, Daniel, he spoke about the, the, the near future, he spoke about the far future, and he did speak about the end of the time, the end of days, in which we are living. We are basically living right now, one minute to midnight. And midnight, the Bible has a symbolical meaning to this word. When we read in the book of Acts about the midnight hour, it's not a coincidence. Of course, it's a depiction of the true story that took place in the time when Paul preached and exactly at midnight, notice, not one minute to, not one minute past, but exactly at the time of midnight, this young fellow went, whoa, flying out of the window. Exactly at the time of midnight, in the biblical typology and symbolism, is exactly at the time prior to Jesus' arrival. And this is exactly the time in which we live. A minute to midnight. You understand that? So if the time has frozen and we are in, he could come at any moment, literally, according to the Bible. This is the time. So basically, it's like this. Being found in this time, in the prophetic calendar of God, we can either be listening to the word of God like the rest of the people in the room when Paul preached, we could be adhering the word of God. We could be really putting it into practice into our lives. Or we could be sitting in the same church, in the same room, flipping the same Christian channels, flipping the same Christian sermons, you know, being in the same Christian setting. But what happened? In the windowsill, with already have way flying out of it, being found dead. You understand what I'm saying? In a slipper, you know, in a sleeping and sober, you know, that 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 somber, that that more of <laughs> You understand what I'm saying? Where I could be very energetic with everything and anything. I could vote 
yes, I can do this, I can do that. But every time it comes time to worship and pray, you understand, I could be very achieving in life. I could be, you know, success driven. I could be a very ambitious person. I could get my good grades. But every time it comes to follow God and reading the Bible, Do you understand what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. That's the guy, that's the young fellow in the windows. And that's a lot of people's condition in the time in which we live. A minute to midnight. Midnight hour. We are right in it. Right in it. You're going to notice, you're not going to find, I'm telling you, people that are going to be somewhere. You know, it's either going to be those that are really committed to God, or it's going to be those that's going to be that's going to become stone cold towards God and go back to the world. In the book of Malachi, it says that in the last days God will draw a line, very thin line, and He's going to show the difference between those that serve Him and those that don't serve Him. You're not going to be able to hide anymore. You're not going to be able to put up the front of a religious, you know, uh, 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 facade anymore. Not anymore. It's either whole hearted dedication to God or it's I'm out of here. I'm in the world. You understand what I'm saying? That's the term. And it, quite frankly, thank God for it. Because why play games? Look what Daniel says. Chapter 12. Let's start with verse 1. At that time, Michael, the archangel, shall stand up the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble. Say time of trouble. Such as never was since there was a nation. A time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation talking about the nation of Israel in particular even to that time there's going to be a time of trouble such as there never was, you understand what I'm saying when we uh, uh, cite history you know the holocaust the, 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 the genocides the, 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 the wiping of many thousands of people and even millions of people, the world war II has more than 20 millions put together of people that died well the time is coming that it's going to be more than that. You understand what I'm saying? It's going to be such as it has never been up to that particular time. Now listen. And at that time, your people shall be delivered. Talking about Jewish people. Everyone who is found written in the book of life. Anybody found written in the book of life in this place? Wave at me if you think your name is in it. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contempt. So there is everlasting life or everlasting shame. But notice, both are everlasting. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. The Bible says that when you watch, uh, you know, these shows, when you praise these Hollywood celebrities, all of that, it's not, they're not really stars. Everything that has to do with this world, according to God's agenda, they're stars that are going to be quickly dimmed out, wiped out. Every time when you walk on Hollywood Boulevard, I was there a few times, I walked on that Boulevard, that is just completely, you can see stars everywhere. You see names of those stars. And those stars, they are under the feet of people. They're just dusty monuments to the dead souls that are just, just lost in all eternity. Their fame was just a glimpse, and that's it. They are no stars. The true stars are the people that are going to dedicate and devote their lives to God. These stars are not going to be trampled by the foot of the tourists and those that come to see this attraction or the you know people that live in the area of Hollywood. Those stars are going to be shining forever upon the firmament of heaven. They're going to be shining Amen. forever in heaven for all eternity. Amen. Do you understand the difference? Yes. Some people, they just settle to be a star in this life. To appraise their settled, you know, to compliments that are settled to this temporary foolish fame. And 
what happens? They lose out the main thing. The star that shines forever. How can you become that star? You got to be walking in the light of God. And the Bible says, those will turn many to righteousness. You got to be, you don't shine for yourself. You also at the service of other people to turn their hearts to the Lord. She's giving you a, 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 a good advice on how to become a star for God. But look what it, what it says further. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Notice, to Daniel, 600 years before the coming of Jesus Christ, before common era, which is 2,600 years back, God says, seal the words. They're not for your time, Daniel. Seal them. But we are living in a time when in the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible, we see that God is showing the breaking of those seals. Where God is unveiling to his people what's going on. What is really taking place in the spiritual realm. But one thing is very important to realize. Even though God is showing, even though God is speaking about the time in which we live and about the spiritual reality that surrounds us and that is yet to come, to this world. Not many understand it, and not many see it. Who will understand it? Look further, Daniel chapter 12, verse 9. And he said, Go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. My question, do you believe that this is the time of the end? Yes. If you don't have a suggestion, watch the latest news. And you're going to see the time in which we live. Watch the news. Jesus said it's going to be like in the days of Lot. What was not the days of Lot? It was practically homosexual agenda taking over entirely and completely. That's exactly what's happening. There's not one magazine, one media channel, not one you know, news post that does not mention something about homosexual agenda. It just basically completely, entirely wants to drown this world in its ways. Do you see that? Governor Chris Christie in New Jersey issued a ban this week. A ban for kids that are struggling with same-sex attraction that they cannot go and seek counseling. And anybody that will make them go and seek counseling and see therapists, those people are going to be closed up and the ban states that they cannot do that. Why? Because homosexuality is not a problem. It's okay. If the kid feels, uh, you know, feels attracted to the same sex, leave him alone. Let him be. Where? Where in New Jersey. Jersey. In New Jersey. It's Mayor Christine. For the yeah, Jersey. Robert and Christie. What about what did you say? The mayor for New York who runs the, the lady. She wants to be a... No, no. For mayor for New York, Christine, or what's her name? No, that's another one. She, she is she's a... She, yeah, She's guys, like and it's, it's, it's going to spread. Imagine a ban on those that would Please. want, that, listen, yeah. that would want for the kids that are struggling with this issue, that can maybe at some early stages be resolved for that individual. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Because now we live in that it's okay thing to do. It's supposed to be on the hush. Don't say it's a problem because we're trying to make it an okay thing. It is not a problem. You are the one that has a problem. You are the fundamental fanatic, you know, fanatic. You are the religious freak. You are the Jesus freak. You are the Bible freak. Don't give us your stuff. This is not a problem. This is the days of Lot. This is the Saddamic era in which we live. Yeah. The whole Europe is sodomized. And America is going to be sodomized too. It's already sodomized. And it's going to come a time where I'm not going to be able to say what I'm saying right now openly to you. Because God forbid, if I will say it, which I probably will, but the consequences will follow. Yeah. Already the consequences are following in the other states where people are getting arrested for the hate speech because they simply stayed inside the message of God's word saying homosexuality is a sin. Not disrespecting anybody. Not saying nothing against anybody, but simply stating what God has stated thousands of years ago and has proven to be right. Isn't that amazing? This is the dark time in which we live. And this is the end time because the biblical prophecy is being fulfilled right before our very eyes. I like Russia, man. Putin is going to put the... Don't like Russia. What? 
Daniel chapter 12. Verse 9. And he said, Go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. In the time of the end, they're going to be unsealed. Many shall be purified, made white, refined, but the wicked shall do wickedly. And none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Who will understand? The wise shall understand. Who are the wise? Listen to me. Who are the wise? Christians. Not Christians. Not Christians. The wise are true Christians. The wise are, just like Jesus said, it goes right back to the midnight theme and topic in the scripture. Jesus said, in that time the kingdom of heaven shall be at the time of his coming, talking about all the cataclysm that's going to happen in the Matthew 24, the earthquakes, the famine, the diseases, nation against nation, the rise of all this madness that we experience only at the beginning stages. But notice how rapidly the speed is picking up. He goes on to chapter 25, and this is the way it shall be for the Christians. They're going to be like virgins, awaited. For the bridegroom to come. Who is the bridegroom? Jesus. And they're going to be divided into 50-50 category. The five of the ten will have lamps. The other five will also have lamps. But the other five will have oil in the lamps. Where those five will have none. And the Bible says at the midnight hour. All of them were asleep. But at the midnight hour, they heard a voice. The bridegroom is coming. Jesus is coming. He's coming. Get ready. He's coming. He's at the door. Jesus is coming. And the foolish ones started to trim the wicks. But there was no oil. They said, wow. The lights are supposed to be on. We need to come and meet them with the lights. But there is no point. All right? We still have time. Girls, hurry up. Let's do this. Oh, those have oil. Can you give us some? No, 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 no. You had your time to get what you need. Now it's too late. How are we going to give you some? Then us and you will have none. It's not going to be enough for both. So this is what you do. You do what you need to do. We keep it up. Because the time is very He's coming. What happened? They went to the market to buy it. When they came back, it was too late. The door was shut. And they stood at that door and they bound on it. Just like Jesus was standing at the door of the, of the church of Laodicea that got wickedly warm. And so now it's, it's, a, it's a vice versa. Now they did not. Let us in! Let us in! Let us in! Jesus said, Who are you? I don't know. You got it all into your head that you're a Christian. You got caught up, we got caught up with the popular agenda. You know, you thought to yourself too much about yourself, but there was no oil. You didn't do what you needed to do, and it still could have been done. It's too late. So, why is it the wise and the foolish? Everybody had the lamp, but not everybody had the oil. Oh, everybody had the Bible. The Bible, everybody has the Bible. God bless you. See you tomorrow, all right? You're going to be coming, huh? All right, so whenever you can. God bless. All right. Everybody has the Bible. Today the preacher comes on the television looking like Richard Gere. There can be a Bible. 20,000 people wave their Bibles. The lamps are there. The lamps are there. Say, I believe everything it says. I believe everything I can be all that it says I can be. I can do all that it says I can be. That this is the this was happening to the Bible. You throw it on the floor. Now let me tell you. You're the champ. Well, oh, you're great. Are oh, you looking good? Love it. You're so good that I don't even know why Jesus came. 
We can just beat that out of Jesus. You're so good, why you need the Jesus for? <laughs> you're so good that it's like your glory. You know. Oh, sin. But what, sin? Well, what is sin? What, what is this thing called sin? Who is God? He doesn't exist. Jesus took care of it. And guess what? None of us sin anymore. So let me tell you how you can be a, a professional player of football. Let me tell you how you can be a great achiever in life. Let me tell you. Let, let me motivate you on this. Let me put my pump and pump your ego a little bit. So you're like a room full of yourself, full of pride, walking around. Six, I'm six, I'm a six, success. I am a, I'm a definition of success. <laughs> oh, the Bible was there. Everybody, I remember, remember. But there was no understanding. There was no explanation. There was no oil in it. Do you see this? Oil, it's, it's a revelation of the Holy Spirit. Oh, right here we have the Bible, but what does it actually teach? What does it actually talk about? So the foolish will understand. I mean, the wise will understand. They would have the light of one. But the foolish, Christians, those that are waiting for the return of Jesus, they will not understand. My question is, which one are we going to be? Midnight hour. A young person fell from the window. Thank God that by the grace of God, he was given another chance. Do you understand time in which we were when we went to the conference I like the way that person explained it. this is what's happening revelation apocalypse means unveiling literally unveiling of a scenario in a spirit that's taking place now it's taking place nobody can stop it but not everybody understands it even in church not everybody maybe gone according to the foolish and wise versions parable 50 50 this would happen simultaneously the wise, the curtain will be lifted up higher and higher. The revelation, wow, 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 I, I never understood this. Wow, this is deep what the Word of God teaches. Wow, this is like bottomless wisdom of God. You could just dive and go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into it. So powerful. It's so majestic. The unveiling will be taking place. At the same time, for the foolish people, Foolish are those selfish people that only mind their business. They don't want to serve God. They're just here only for the right to have an easy access to heaven. That's about it. Guess what? It's not happening. It's not happening. This is what happens to the foolish ones. That same curtain gets lower and lower and lower and lower. And lights go out and out. And dimmer they go until... of that darkness that Jesus is in. Just want to add that. Midnight. Guys, everybody want to you know, fall asleep. All of us have tendency because we're still in the flesh. All of us. When I come from work and I open up the Bible, guess what happens? should have thought about that in the morning. It happens to all of us. Time to pray. Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus, you're so good. Thank you. I need some tea. Hold on. Whatever. I don't know. I don't even know what to say. It's just like that. Next time. It happens to all of us. But we need to try as much as we can to fight this thing. Amen. Amen. That's what I wanted to add. And, 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 and we thank you, Andre. And let's just pray for Andre. Thank you so much, Lord, for this word, Lord. And thank you so much for, for another remind, reminder to us, Father. Thank you so much for really giving us the understanding of your word. We, we, we cherish that. We, we want to keep it as a treasure, Lord God. And not only to ourselves, but we do want to share it. But... First and foremost, we want to be able to live by it in a practical way, in a practical manner. 
Father, bless my brother, Lord. I pray that you may continue to reveal yourself to him. Pray that you may give him strength, Lord God, to withstand against the schemes of the devil, Lord God. I pray that you may raise him up, Lord God, to the to the place where you have seen him from the very beginning, Lord God. That those words of prophecy that were set concerning him, Lord God, and your plans that cannot be spoiled, Father, that they may come to fruition, that they may come to achievement by him. In Jesus' name, Lord. Bless his family, Father. Bless Svetochka. Bless the children, Lord God, and increase your knowledge, Lord God, and through that spread it, Father, to those that are in desperate need of it. In the name of Jesus the Christ, Lord, that lives may be changed and transformed, and that many can indeed turn to righteousness. Hallelujah. And we thank you, Lord, for this evening, Father. Just bless your people, Lord God, and I ask, Lord, that you may keep watch over them, Lord God, and even as you always do, but that for all of us, Lord, that we may keep watch and be awake over the things which you entrusted to us. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I pray that you may bless the rest of this evening, Lord. I pray that you may dismiss us with your shalom, with your peace, Lord God. And I pray, Lord God, that you may continue to speak to us even as we go to bed tonight. And even as we wake up tomorrow, that we indeed can be awake, sober-minded, depending upon your grace that is given to us. And seek in your face. Day in, day out, every day, Lord, help us so we would not become weary and not become lazy. Hallelujah. Bless tomorrow's service, Lord God. Let your anointed flow, Lord God. Let your healing flow and your word of encouragement and word of challenge, let it flow. In Jesus' name, Lord God, continue to unveil to your people those plans that you have in your heart. And let us adhere to it with all of ourselves. In Jesus' name I ask. Amen. Be blessed, guys.